Now, exactly. now is now is a good time for it. I think those of us who uh, you know prayed at the altar of Radiohead and Smashing Pumpkins don't we we don't have much if we don't have irony. Uh, exactly. So yeah, yeah. My irony lung, my favorite. Uh, oh God! Da- All right, you know what? You're just gonna handle this one by yourself. You guys are good. <laughs> Jesus, this podcast no, that is was- over. I'm not, I'm just mad that I didn't come up with that. I'm frustrated that I didn't come up with that joke. And that's what that was. <laughs> I was going to say, Phil, you can't go because me and Kevin, I don't think we have the, I don't even think we've absorbed the entire book between us. So we need, oh Lord, all, we need <laughs> all is, hands just, on deck for this. <laughs> we're just going to kind of get yeah, through please, this book. Please do. And, yeah. Yeah. and, yeah. um, but I do have, I do have one, one thought. Um, yes. You know what isn't ironic? What's that? Hey there, everybody. <sighs> Welcome back to Pixlet. My name is Kevin. With me, as always, is Phil. And today, joining us is, you know him as Hot Cider from, from the internet. He's he's an internet boy. He's Hello. he's on there, and he's he's doing internet things, and he's also the host of the Bullet Time podcast. Keep blasting. Pew, pew, pew. Pew, 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 pew. Pew, pew, pew. If, you're, uh, if, yeah. you're, if, you're, a, if you're a fan of the podcast Pixel Lit, you may also be listening to uh, Bullet Time, considering one half I, of uh, Pixel Lit has been on it for a past I think I feel like our podcasts are inextricably linked. There's just yeah. no yeah. getting around it. <laughs> but they're sister podcasts. If, they're like... Um, yeah. Like Bionic Commando and Mega Man, they're both made on. Yeah, like Bionic Mega- Commando and Mega Man, they're 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 related to each they're other. They're related. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And you know what? It, speaking of Bionic Commando, that's that's what we're talking about today. It is. Uh, we're we're talking about Worlds of Power Bionic Commando. Pew, 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 pew. Which is okay, Phil. Did you think that Bionic Commando was a sequel to Commando? Uh, well, it was touted in the U.S. as a sequel to Commando. I don't. It Got was it. not the original plan. Uh, that's why Super Joe is in it. That was the name of the main character in the uh-huh. Commando NES game. Right. So, but in Japan, I don't. I don't think that was the original <laughs> intention. So, if if I'm allowed to uh, pull out my notes, go here for we it. Go. My, here my we bullet go. side notes. So it's called Commando because the developer, or at least the designer of Bionic Commando, is uh, Yokoro Fujiwara, who was like basically Capcom's Miyamoto, like during the eighties, because he was responsible for Commando in eighty five. Mm-hmm. Then went on to do Ghost and Goblins later in the year, and then yep. Kevin, interestingly for you, Sweet Home in eighty six. Yep, the first- oh. and then he became does, a producer. Uh- Yes, he's the guy. He's the producer of the original Resident Evil. And no shit, Mega yep. Man and Strider. He basically <laughs> gave uh, Kenji Unifune and um, God, what, what's his name? The the Resident Evil guy. The Resident Evil guy. Him. Oh, uh, yeah, the guy. He's still making. Uh, he's, Hideki, he's not he's, Hideki he's, Kamiya. The other one. God damn it. Oh no! Oh, this podcast <laughs> the guy, is off the rails already. Oh, we're off the rails already. It's the guy who made uh, Evil Within. Uh, fuck, what's and, his name? And Resident uh, Evil oh, Four and Vanquish. And, yeah, that guy. But that anyway, guy. um, then left Capcom and formed a Whoopi Camp, where he made the excellent PlayStation game Tomba or Tombi, depending where you are. Oh, so very interesting guy. He very- eventually came back to Capcom to do uh, Ghosts and Goblins Resurrection um, a couple of years ago, <sighs> which is a really decent like like reimagining of it like yeah. it's still 2d but they use the re engine to make it look like um oh, the reach, elections yeah the reach for the moon engine uh, they, oh, wow. they <laughs> exactly um <laughs> the japanese name for um bionic commander by the way is top secret like the uh, yes. zucker brothers film and the nes because um because it was originally an arcade game the nes version is called top secret colon Hitler's resurrection. Hitler's resurrection. <laughs> that's right. Because that's something that we'll have to talk about a little bit about this book. A little and bit also is this, uh, franchise. Is it's it's the bads in the in the American version, but I I feel like it was straight up the Nazis in in the Japanese version. I, I think that's what's amazing about the Japanese culture is that the Japanese actually fought with them. 
uh, during World War II. And the, the West yeah. was like, dude, we don't want fucking Hitler in our video games. And the Japanese are like, hey, we fought with the guy. And we're we're going to we're going to kill him in our video games. What could oh, yeah. be more mea culpa than that? You know? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. I, I, and I also it also is like there's there's like this in the in Japanese NES games in particular. There's like this. Um, openness to what would be controversial titles in the West that they just slap right the fuck on their games. Yeah. So there's like, there's, so there's, so there's Bionic Command, uh, like Top Secret, The Resurrection of Hitler, but there's also, um, there's like, what is it? Castlevania is originally called something like, it's called Dracula's um, Castle in the, um, the one of, there's, a, it might not be Castlevania. There's one where it's like, killing satan or something like like some like weird <laughs> devil title i know i i know which game you mean but it's like literally on the tip of my tongue but yeah i know <laughs> there is one where it's literally in japan it is just called like satan killer but they brought it over here and they're just like eh. it's, on the it's double dread it, it, it's 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 bubble bobble <laughs> yeah, bubble, yeah, bubble bobble was originally satan yeah Man, i know those- castle Castle that wouldn't surprise funny... me at all. Bubble Bobble had some evil shit in it. It was a <laughs> twisted game. <laughs> oh, absolutely, yeah. Castlevania does have a funny thing because you were saying about like um, Japanese developers were very kind of they, they didn't really shy away from anything. And Castlevania has a lot of like they would fill the game full of crucifixes because obviously that's yeah. There would be a lot of Christian imagery in it. Yeah, and then a lot of like um, you know when they port those over, they'd be like take those out. But my favorite one is I think it's Castlevania Three. You beat a boss, and there is a gigantic shining crucifix in the Japanese version. And then the American version, the crucifix is still there, but they were just like, take the shine up, like, tone just, it down a little just, bit. Just, <laughs> just, kick, 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 just, just calm it down, guys. guys this, right. is a, this is a little much. Let's, let's turn yeah, the Yeah, come on, turn guys. The, turn the notch down. It's, it's, it's always down interesting to see, like, what over here. Like, I literally, last night, my wife and I went to our first rodeo. Um, Ooh. Yeah, we went we went and watched some bull riding and it opened with a very fervent, very over the top, very sincere prayer. Uh, and I and, you know, it's it, it's like, A, we know where we are. Uh, uh, B, these are people You're in who South like, Carolina, buddy. Yeah, man. And 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 frankly, <laughs> bull riding is not exactly uh, uh, billiards, you know, so no, you know what? No. Sure. No atheists and foxholes. Fine. I, I get it. Uh, <laughs> whatever makes you happy. But it, it, but uh, it's so funny to see. Because basically what it is, is is with that kind of thing, the Japanese developers were mythologizing uh, the oh, religion, yeah. you know, treating it the way we might treat, you know, ancient Greek gods. And we put them in our comics and our games and shit. And it's like, no, people actually worship that stuff. Oh, yeah. uh, it's 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 so it's so rare, I think, uh, uh, for for us on the West to get a look at uh, how we look, especially Americans, I think, to get a no. way we look. Yeah. And the thing is, is that it's hard to argue that it's sacrilegious because a part of it is just kind of like, you know, lost in translation, but also kind mm-hmm. of like, they're just very hype about stuff. And it's funny because yeah. like as things have kind of blended together, you don't see that much anymore. Apart from like about 10 years ago, there was a game called like El Shaddai, The Rise of Metatron, which yeah, is purely like a anime reinterpretation of the, the Old Testament, but like mm-hmm. as a right. pretty action game made by like most of Suda 51's guys it is a bl- like it is something <laughs> I have a, I have a I have a copy of it I never played it I I and Metatron a, is supposed to be the voice of god the right? voice of yeah, god Yeah that's right Yeah Yeah <laughs> I I did a video on the history of uh Christian video games uh years oh, nice. ago uh, yeah and I and I bought that game uh thinking maybe I would uh I would play that for research and uh, that that never happened but uh yeah. it's fascinating to look at it's really I'm, I'm gonna have to now you put that in my head now I gotta do that so Phil uh did do you happen to know who wrote bionic commando because it sure as hell <gasps> yes. is an fx9 it is uh, not our, our dear friend of the it's podcast not our, it's not our dear friend Seth Godin. He Seth did not Godin. Write, actually write this. <laughs> he did not actually write any of these. Uh, uh, but he 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 bankrolled it as best as I can tell. This was written by J. B. Stamper, uh, Judith also known Bauer Judith Stamper. Bauer Stamper. Yeah. Yes, um, who she uh, did a lot of scholastic writing. That's basically mm-hmm. her thing. She was a she was a you know uh, writer for hire 
style writer, did a lot of kids horror, a lot of spooky short stories. She did some magic school bus stuff. Yeah. Uh, a lot of what, you know, it's like the children's book version of genre fiction. So to be completely uh, yeah. honest. Well, what's funny is, is I looked her up briefly and I yeah. saw, I was like, oh, she wrote kind of like proto Goosebumps yeah. stuff. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, like, I, it's called like um, Tales, like uh, Tales for the Midnight Hour, which I imagine because right. this was in 89. Probably cashing in on, because I mean, I wasn't born doing that year, but like <laughs> Tales from the Crypt was probably like at its height around that yeah, time, I'm guessing. Yeah. Uh, something like that. Well, yeah. the first Tales from the Midnight Hour came out in 1977, which, wow, if you can believe okay. this hot cider, is actually older than me and Kevin. Oh my God, uh, I, I, so, I, can't, I can't believe such a time existed. Yeah, it's only, I know. Only, it's only older than Phil by four years. By four so. years. But, uh, <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> You know, my wife told me the other day that she had had assumed uh, until I mentioned it briefly the other day that you were older than me, Kevin. She assumed I was older than you. Yeah, she thought you were the the older brother. Uh, no. <laughs> no, that's uh, much like much like your actual younger brother. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> who people assumes is your older brother. Yeah. Yeah. I, I said, it's the voice. He has the gravitas voice. You know, that's that's what Kevin brings to the table. Um but yeah, I remember reading these. That's the thing. Uh, this the, the original tales from the midnight hour. Uh, I remember. I I looked her up. I saw that cover, and I went. I just poof, got hit with nostalgia bat. Uh, I don't remember much about them, but I remember these books. And it seems to me that she's the appropriate person to ask for uh, this kind of thing. You know, I was going to say, say she's a good fit for Wheels of Power. I don't know if she's yeah. such a good fit for this particular yeah. franchise though yeah maybe maybe not bionic commando specifically maybe if they maybe asked castlevania her would have been castlevania Ooh, or yeah the shadow like gate one goonies yeah. two goonies oh, two would, dude goonies two. i would have loved if there was a worlds of power goonies two. is there a world's oh of power God. goonies two? i doubt it they would have had to get they would have had to get well, extra yeah. permission they would have uh, had to say that's hey, an is this extra kosher? level yeah that's yeah. an extra level of of licensing right there. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, let's jump into this weird book. Um, so it's Bionic Commando, the game Bionic Commando. We we're talking about it for a little bit. You know, it's you, you play as a guy who has a bionic arm, and you're just, just swinging, and you're go, going going to rescue soup. You're you can't jump. You can only nope. you can only swing around. Uh, yeah. And uh, which you know what? That's more realistic than most other. Have you ever like <laughs> jump? Have you ever jumped a lot? Like jumping is not easy to do on a regular basis, and no. we just take it for granted in games. We're like, yeah, fuck Mario, fucking jumping all the that's time. Why he's, that's why he's Super Mario, not just Mario, because he does. That's right. why he's Super Mario because right. he is able to get that fat ass off the ground. Oh uh, man, I took. I took the stairs two at a time uh, last night on the way into the arena and, and thought oh, I was going to have a stroke. So, uh, <laughs> so I don't think, I don't think jumping on any level of regularity is in the books for me. Yeah. Oh, so he's enough. like, he has a Spider-Man, Spider-Man esque mechanic of yeah. swinging around. You know, he makes you to, to borrow a quote from every review of Spider-Man PS4. It makes you feel like Spider-Man. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, um, yeah, that's Bionic Commando. Uh, you're you're fighting against the bads and then uh, the, yep, the, yep, that's what they call. They they are called. B-A-D-D. That's what they're called. They're the they're the bads. They're not the Nazis. No. Don't compare them to nope. the Nazis because they're not them. They're led um, by Generally Simo Kilt, who his symbol Kilt, who is, is putting mm, his arm up, but a full fist, nothing else. He doesn't. Full fist. He's else yeah. not Hitler. Absolutely not. And neither is Master D. Neither uh, is Master no, D. No. He is a Ooh. he is a lowly scientist. He's yeah. Master D is a lowly scientist don't. who used to work for the Naz. Also the not the also the not Naz. the Nats Nazis. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. The book starts off with the pit of peril, which is okay. just a prologue. Can I ask a quick question about this? So you have yeah. read other FX9 Wars of Power books. Do they yeah. do this in the other books? Every time. They yep. <laughs> a little. And is the idea just like, oh, I mean, if I'm a if I'm a child and I just got to read like you know the front page, it's like name of the book, who wrote it? You know, oh, I'm going to be bored as hell. So just put a random paragraph. Just it's a yeah, little, it's little taste, little taste. It's like kids so. Hooked. 
we we used to have I I, I don't know if the, you you guys had this over over uh, across the pond, James. But we used to have these scholastic book fairs. Did you remember the book fair, Phil? Oh yeah, where, where you we would like there would be a day where there would be like a bunch of books set out in the library, and you just walk around and like read like buy it. It's like having kids buy books. Like your parents would sure. give you some money to. Yeah, so it, we would have a book fair, and I think the idea was that a lot of the scholastic books had these like little Hooks. teaser sections yeah. in the beginning, so that you could just like flip it open and be like, "Oh, okay, this sounds cool," and be like, "No, nah, that sounds dumb," or whatever. So, You're like, I can't. I think we had something like this previously, but we in the UK, and I think in some parts of Europe, we do have World Book Day, which is mm-hmm. like a thing where for kids. They give you a World Book Day voucher that you can exchange against a, like a kind of a very light kind of 100 to 80 page book. And a lot of them are sure. scholastic ones. So I think that was probably, yeah. It's probably like, related. Yeah, I yeah. think it is a related thing. Because I think I got a lot of like kind of smaller novella ghost bumps for doing that. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Scholastic. So yeah, Scholastic, they had their methods and oh, yeah. in, in getting themselves onto your shelf. But yeah, all the other Worlds of Power um books open with a scene what's funny is it's not the exact same scene it's usually rewritten to be yes, a little bit exciting. tighter a yeah, little they, bit more exciting they change it it's definitely different we've noticed that since the beginning it's always a little different it's so funny so you chapter th- one starts with uh jack markson is jack markson which is just a late 80s <laughs> early 90s like it's just like i couldn't figure think of a name so right. <laughs> no, I don't know. Whether I, I don't know whether I am jumping ahead here, but for both Kevin and Phil, how long did it take you to realize that Jack Markson is Rad Spencer from the original game? Oh, it, it took it. I only knew because Kevin had mentioned uh, he had read the first chapter and okay. described it a little to me. But no, I'm with you. I was like, I was like, I would have, I would have been a little lost, uh, yeah, as well. And yep. that's the thing is like, it's not the first time that this has happened. I was going to say, is that also mm. another Worlds of Power thing of and they metal, don't know yes. what the main yeah. guy is called? We uh, So we read the Metal Gear book with, with Jesse Garasha. And oh, one of the big things was that, you know, Solid Snake had this random ass name yeah. in it. It was like, I can't even remember what it was. It was just... Are, are you looking it up, Phil? I'm looking uh, it up. <laughs> it, 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 because it's like, who the hell is this guy? This isn't Solid Snake. Solid Snake doesn't <laughs> Agent, really. Oh, it's, it's, it, is, it is perfect because it's, it is that kind of name. Agent Justin Halley. Justin Halley. That's, that's, <laughs> that's Solid Snake. <laughs> Justin Halley. I'm Justin Halley. I'm Justin Halley, and Justin Halley is a furry. Um, that's the that's one of the only things I remember from that episode, but it's it's a good episode. <laughs> so Jack Markson is hanging out. He's hanging out in a hotel. He's eating in, pizza in, in, with in Buenos with Aires. Super we Joe. should mention yeah. which is in called Buenos oh, Aires, a, a, yeah. a, fa- a famous hot spot for pizza, uh, for pizza, pizza and also. <laughs> War criminals during a potential world war, but we're not going to get. Don't, I mean, they're not who you think you are. Okay, it's I mean, <laughs> yeah, they're they're fighting the Naz in the Buena, Naz. in Argentina. In Argentina, mm, in Argentina, they're fighting the Naz in Argentina. Uh-huh. That was like the first thing I like pulled out. Was like, hmm. Judith uh, Judith Brown has done her research. I she think. knew what she was doing. She, she, she knew she's read Boys doing. from Brazil. Her, she knew yeah, yeah, uh-huh. the, the, whole, the back. They just got back from the Boys from Brazil. That's the mission before this. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> no, so she knew what was happening. All those plans. And so there, he's he's eating pizza and he's laughing yeah. and he's flirting with Super Joe. Oh my um, god, so gay! It's just. <laughs> Kevin, We're not saying um, gay in a pejorative sense. No, we are one hundred percent. We are saying it is literally gay. I I thought, of course, he's having pizza with Super Joe because Super Joe's his boyfriend. Like that's yeah. how it felt. Um, <laughs> Super Joe brought in four hot. They are described as four boxes of hot pizza. So they're mm. eating four two boxes pizzas of, bet- between yeah. them, and they are recollecting about uh, the time that they were in a prison in Bangkok. It's very yeah. Oh boy. <laughs> oh boy. 
I, it's like, it's, I guess she wrote this and it was like, the kids are never going to pick up on any of this. Um, so they're, they're eating their pizza and they, they stopped the Naz and they, the, the Naz couldn't get, they couldn't get, build the albatross. That's awesome. You know, yeah. they stopped the Naz and Master D. They found it. They found a guy. They found a guy and they got some information out of him and it sounds yeah. From what it sounded like was that albatross they weren't they weren't lucky enough to get the albatross plans, but they know that albatross is a thing. That was yes, what I figured exactly. out from the insurer. And then yeah, they were recollecting about what a wonderful time they were having. They were and Joe left it's a lovely without stopping time. eating is uh, yeah. another line that I managed to I, I grabbed the snapshot he, of he's, he's got his he's got the pizza in his mouth. Yeah. Um and then uh holy shit, the bad uh attack the hotel room. Oh. They are they're under fire. There's the bad and it's generally Simo Kilt himself yep. and and ninjas. Just yes. so many ninjas. Yes. The the famous trope of having ninja enemies in Bionic Commando. Okay. Yeah, the famous trope of, mm-hmm. of ninjas in Bionic ninjas. Commando. Yep. That, that was the thing. Yep. Working as well for the Naz as as we the Naz. Know, is, uh, the Naz. Famous trip as well. That's a famous thing. Famous. And, um, and 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 by the way, uh, Jack is not going to use his gun because he's a man of honor. Of course. <laughs> Great. This is another. <laughs> by the way, this is another example. We noticed this in Ninja uh, Ninja Gaiden. Uh, mm. He didn't have a knife in his hand in the uh, the cover art for that, and they've actually also taken away. The bionic <laughs> and they just turned into a fist. gun. Right. So there, there's his gun in the in like on the game here's, cover and on the game cover and on the book cover. There's nothing there. <laughs> he's they, just, they, he's just, they, they et'd him. Yeah, no, brother. It, it, he's just holding up his fists. I mean, we're only a couple of days removed from MLK's birthday. He's just showing support. Yeah, anyway. yeah, yeah. I mean, that's that's fine. Just that's yeah. fine. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, um, I'm with it. So he fights, they fight waves after wave of ninja. Uh, Super Joe is captured and Jack falls out of a window. Um, wow. Well, but, what, but what also happens before he, well, not to, not to correct you, he decides to jump out the window because that's his only means of escape. But before he does, they do plunge their sharp pronged shurikens into his arm. Yeah. Before he- yeah. He, he is he is he is off the window he landed in a pool we're in chapter two now and he is he wakes up and his arm has been replaced by a bionic arm and yes. his regular arm was was just i mean the shurikens and landing in the pool that was just too much for his it's arm too much. they had, to, too they had much. to cut it off they had to cut the damn arm off we wish we um, wish that we could have asked your permission first but time was of we the wish essence. we could have a- time was of the essence we got had to it's like put a deus ex uh you know human revolution they just decided yeah. well you were dying and we have this cool arm that we wanted to test out so like you know yeah yeah why not you know if it worked if it was good enough for robocop it's good enough for you, Jack. And Metal, Gear Solid, Metal Gear Solid Five starts exactly the same way. Kojima read this book and said, "I want the same intro in my game." I mean, Where he knew what he was doing. There's, he knew there's what he was doing. Where Snake and Master Miller eat hot boxes of pizza, and then he loses his <laughs> arm. It's, the, it's this game really does have some some real Metal Gear energy. To, oh, big time. to this, some of the this, scenes. This, but I was going to say there is some parts of this book where it did kind of feel like it did feel very Metal Gear, which is interesting considering the yeah. game that they did after Rearms. What that kind of riffs on, but I guess we can get into that a little bit. Later. Yeah. <laughs> so he has the arm has like a lot of abilities, including it can do more grapple. Yeah. It, yeah. Way more than the game. It, oh, way more. Way more. It, it has the so in the in the game, the only thing it has is the grapple. Yes. You, you got to grapple. That's it. Um, in this, it has it has uh, most importantly the thing that he uses probably almost as much as the goddamn grapple is the. The hot finger. The hot finger. Hot the hot finger. The hot finger. Hot Where's that cider branding, with the hot, hot cider. Hot Come cider on. with the hot finger. Yeah. Hot cider with hot fingers. There you go. Um, yeah. It's got a hot. He's got a hot finger, uh, and he also has an electromagnetic field that forces. <laughs> he people has an electric hot truth. finger, an electric finger, and a truth-telling finger. 
<laughs> he's got a lot of fingers on this on this. I was about to say can. he's very he's very Inspector Gadget in regards to that's stuff exactly the note I wrote. Fingers. Inspector Gadget, yeah. absolutely. <laughs> no, it's funny because on one hand, the more I thought of, I was like. I was like, this is so, why did they do this? What's the point of this? And it won't be the first time that I asked that question. Sure. Uh, But I started to think about it in terms of like, well, when you think about it, how interesting can you make 110 pages of he swang and he swung some more and which he is, felt which like is, Spider-Man. Uh, and which which like, is very relevant for this book in regards to, there are chapters of this book where you completely glaze over because it's like oh yeah. he ran into the room and the room was doing this and then he did this and it's like <laughs> God. but yeah the, the the magic the magic finger stuff was very kind of like it made me think of like jane like probably judith bauer lo- re- watched like some james bond films because it was very james bond writing in regards yes. to he gets to a bit where he will like he'll be put in a situation which can only use like something that, that can toy. melt a door and yeah, then, like right. the script writers will write that in, and then make sure to go back to get to say to Q, okay, give him the item that lets him melt a door. Yeah, right. Yep. Just exactly. completely single use ability. Single these yep. single use tools. Like Q is like going to give you a thing that that makes uh, uh, cats uh, run around like crazy. Yep. Well, that's awfully specific. And it's like, well, you'll use it. Trust me. It's. <laughs> um. Uh, so the so Jack is going to go into the bad territory. He's talking yes. to the captain, and the captain's like, "You're going into the the bad territory, and you're going to fight the bad." You're going to save Super Joe. You're going to yeah. save Super Joe, but it's not. It, it, Super Joe's probably going to die, and you're probably going to die. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and we only find that out because he uses his. He the tells him. Telling. By the way, you have a true telling finger, and he goes, "Does it work on you?" And he goes, well, "Test it and see." Pulls out the truth telling finger and he goes, How successful am I going to be on this mission? Yeah, He's like, You're bad. probably going to die. You're yeah, probably yeah. going to die. You answer, <laughs> Joe. It's a su- <laughs> yeah, what are my chances? Slim, the captain answered. It's a suicide mission. It's a chapter suicide three. mission. <laughs> 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 chapter three. In and, and, and chapter three, he spends weeks. He spends training four up. weeks training oh, yeah. his hot finger. Um, rock, and the captain montage. tells, and then he has another conversation with the captain. And the captain tells him he's replaceable, but the arm is not. So if you're <laughs> yeah. if you're I gonna die, that. if you're gonna die, die in a way that like saves the arm, so we right. can come and get it. But he also <laughs> says you can still back out, Jack. <laughs> and then he goes, yeah. "No, I'm I'm ready for the mission. It's like, I'm yes. ready to go. Yeah, I'm ready to um, die." Uh, so he, Jack is on a he gets on a supersonic jet. He goes to the Pacific. And he f- gets on a helicopter and he flies his helicopter to, st- to stage one. Stage fly- one. <laughs> stage one. They're, they're just, yeah. these, this, is, this is what like all these cities and towns in Buenos Aires are called. Is yeah. stage, stage one. Stage one. Stage 16. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's, it's it. That's it. It's stage one. And he, chapter four now, he, Jack is infiltrating stage one and he's, <laughs> he's ducking his way around troopers uh, and he gets his and they're like oh my god he's moving too fast and he gets into the comms room and he talks to MA1 who is yes. a double agent uh, who tells him he's like you gotta go over here you gotta go through that door and you just gotta run and you move. And it's pretty much the same conversation you have in the game with this guy yeah. it's like mm-hmm. ignore the ignore the enemy just go um, and then he's, he switches over to the eavesdrop setting and he listens to a message on the bad channel and the they make it like there is a um, there's a conversation where it's like commander watch out for the the elevator and then the guy, other guy goes we have you now yeah. and i'm like <laughs> in the game it never made any sense no. that yeah. scene um uh the author manages to make it somewhat make more sense in the book she actually like writes in a re- so he runs around and he's ducking and dodging and diving um through the ele- and and he gets on an elevator at one point and the elevator explodes and that was what the guys were referring to is that yeah. that they rigged the elevator to explode when he got on it because we have you now jack um <laughs> and uh he he begins falling down the elevator shaft and chapter 4 ends with schmuck bait 
of of mm. him forgetting how to use his arm. I was going to say, oh, I, yeah. I made a note of that. Then something worse happened. He forgot how to work the crappling hook on his bionic arm. And it's like, so, Phil, you Phil, you rem- <laughs> Phil, do you, rem- you remember what schmuck bait is, right? Schmuck bait? Uh, yeah. Not offhand. Okay, so... Uh, this is a this is a, a a term I remember learning from Chris Hour. Um, this is the term in writers' rooms for when you end an episode on a cliffhanger, but it's the main character. Or no, you end an act in a TV show on a cliffhanger and resolve it immediately after the commercial break. Right, mm-hmm. right. Okay, <laughs> I do remember that. Yeah, good name. I, I always name. think of. Um, I think it's like the American version of Master Chef or something. It's like. After the break, and it like cuts to a guy, and it's like this food is awful. And he like smashes plate on the floor. They cut afterwards, and they go, "This food is awful." Smash, awfully good. And now no one's going to be able to eat this after me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck just happened? What, is, <laughs> yeah, what, what am I fucking fancying? Can I um, okay. can I ask another quick question? Sorry sure. about these words, Chef Palpix. Does every every few section like chapter four has ended with? Game hints. Get the oh, yeah. no, that, that, That's the thing. That, okay. That's thinking, all of the worlds of power books have the upside down game hints. Y- yeah, the game hints. Yeah. That, some of that, them are not even accurate, though. Oh, uh-huh. yeah. No, I was going to say some of these seem like wildly off, but so, guess, some yeah, of them are not helpful in the slightest. And that's part <laughs> of the hook, I guess, for like, hey, buy this book based on a game that you recognize and it also has hints. It's, I don't know. Yeah. I think they should do that with, like, I think, like, like Cormac McCarthy's Blood Meridian should also have like hints like at the end of sections <laughs> just like white wine stains can help get red wine stains out of coffins you know, stuff like that. If, it's, if we're talking Blood Meridian I think they should end every chapter with if you're going to keep uh, reading uh, we will re- recommend half a bottle of Glenlivet to s- you know, soften <laughs> yeah, the blow exactly. use baking soda to get hard to, hard to remove stains out of pans yes. <gasps> are you crying a lot use Visine uh, because you're dehydrating your eyes oh man Phil how was the most recent Cormac McCarthy book you read it, it right yeah, it was very tedious. Uh, very tedious. It, it's it was very inter- It was one. I I would read it, and it would be really interesting because Cormac McCarthy is a brilliant writer. Oh yeah. And then he'd go off on some tangent about something that wasn't clear what the hell we're talking about. And it would go on for 20, 30, 40 pages. And in my head, I would go, okay, old man, get the fuck on with it. And it's like, <laughs> Cormac Mac- and it's like Cormac McCarthy was listening to me and he'd go, you're right. And I get like another <laughs> 30, 40 pages of the most engaging, horrifying, beautiful shit. So it'd be like, I couldn't put it down. Um, but I wanted to a lot of the time. So it needed, it needed some uh, tightening up. You're Kevin, saying, oh, hi, Jonesy. Oh, Kitty, hello. <laughs> They're going to be bothering could, me could, until I feed Kevin, them. Kevin, could you imagine being on a podcast where you go off on like 30, 40, 40 minute tangents <laughs> that have nothing to do no. with the. No, this is the well, time, folks. <laughs> that's because that's because we run a very tight ship here. Absolutely. Uh, Absolutely. And we never allow ourselves to be distracted never. Uh, from the task at hand. Ever. It, are both the cats in the room? I think so. I'm going <laughs> to. You guys just give me five minutes. I'm gonna. Yeah, go them. ahead. They're, they're, not, they're gonna be insufferable. <laughs> because I saw I, I saw a Ripley like kind of walking around in circles <laughs> behind you. They're gonna. Yeah, they're gonna. Jonesy, when he is hungry, he <laughs> will get right here, and he'll just like look at me and just be like, "Hello, food. Here please. we are. Hello, Hello. friend. Yeah, <laughs> father. Mm-hmm. All right, I'll be right back. Right, go, you guys keep go going. Feed, go ahead. Go feed them." <laughs> Come on, you idiots! <laughs> All right, so Phil has gotten up to feed his his cats. They're uh, they're very hungry, and uh, we're left with an empty frame. Uh, just Phil's microphone hanging there. I, I'm appreciating at, looking at his um, shelf of books and stuff. Yeah, he's got a lot of books back there, and then he's got you know a lot of artwork hanging up. He's he's got straight ahead. You see uh, a drawing of the Flatwoods monster, which is oh, is a, that what uh, that is? I was more yeah. um, the only thing I could re- well, apart from the question mark block for Mario, the thing I could recognize is what's next to it, which is the Max. I think. Uh, I I think it is. Yeah, um, from um from from the MTV. Uh, well, based yeah. on the comic book, but from the nineties MTV Liquid Television series, The Max. The Max, and that's with two X's. 
Texas. Uh, Adam he's got a Secret of Mana poster up there. Um, oh, yeah. And an illustration of a... Uh, <laughs> is that, I guess, a, a praying mantis? He loves praying mantis. Phil used to raise praying mantises. Did he actually. really? Yeah. Yeah, that was he's a he's a bug guy. You can ask him pretty much anything about bugs and he'll he'll have an answer. If he was a um, if he was a Pokemon trainer that you would like um encounter on the trail, he would be Bugmaster Phil. He would he would have insect uh Pokemon. Caterpies That's pretty much and bee drills and stuff like that. Excellent. We've determined that if you were a Pokemon trainer, that you would have most entirely insect based oh, Pokemon. Yeah, without question. Yeah. That's <laughs> That's kind of my thing. Yeah. <laughs> I've got, you can't see them from here, but I've got a, a wall of different preserved insects. Oh, uh, interesting. Yeah. I've collected over the years. So, I'm and a, you used to raise mantises, right? Yeah. I used to breed and raise praying mantises of various types. Uh, I was v- very, very single uh, in those days. Sure. <laughs> so, sure. I'll never, I mean, I remember you telling me a story about like uh, having somebody over and you just had like a wall of cases of mantises yep. like just stacked up. And that has got to be disconcerting for anyone who. Yeah, for for two reasons. Uh, well, three, technically. Uh, the first and most obvious one being they're praying mantises. Of course. Uh, and there's nothing more alien and weird looking in the animal kingdom uh, than outside of like the Marianas Trench. Uh, yeah. But uh they're also one of the only insects that have necks so they can turn their head to look at you, uh, <laughs> which is unnerving. And yeah. uh, and you, they are also cannibalistic. And so you have to keep each of them in their own little individual container. So, so it it's this library of uh, carnivorous <laughs> insects. And I was I, this was like our third date and she'd never been to my place before. And she knew about this. Like I talked about it in a class we were in together. But she and, can only uh, imagine so much. That's that was basically her her exact stance on the whole thing. Yes, <laughs> uh, she, we walked it because she wanted. We were going to get a cup of coffee. We were going to have some coffee at my place before we went out to eat, and uh, and we walked in, and all the manises just go, <laughs> and and I'll never forget. She just stopped in her dead in her tracks and just went, oh. <laughs> and I just said, I, I look like a serial killer. And she was like, no, no. She was so sweet. Like, she was like, no, 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 this, it's fine. I knew I just, it's just very dramatic. A lot of like, them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's a lot of them. Yeah. Yeah. That was, that was, that was a whole thing. Um, and I, I kept a, a giant Vietnamese centipede for a while. Some Ooh. scorpions. I'm a big invertebrate guy. So but now I have yeah. cats and a wife. So I'm content. You're content. I'm content. And your gin. And your gin. And my gin. I make gin. And that helps. And I drink sherry. So life is life is good. Oh, lovely. <laughs> Do you pair alcohols with whatever books you're reading? Or, uh... Sometimes. Yeah. I, I so like what pairing you, so have you, so Did you like, but you didn't intentionally pair sherry with FX and Heinz Wars of no. Terror, Bionic <laughs> no, Commander. I, I do enjoy drinking sherry uh, in particular while we do Pixel Lit, though. Okay. Uh, because it's uh, because uh, Pixel Lit, we tend to record it at the end of my day. And ah, yeah. uh, sherry is is one of my favorite, like after work, kind of settle down and, and, and put on your smoking jacket and, you know, chill out kind of beverage. I, I'm a big fan of it. Makes sense. I used to work in the wine industry, so I've got all kinds of weird alcoholic kinks. <laughs> it's fine. It's good. Phil's got his Phil's got his wine. Um, mm-hmm. Everybody I've has their chapter, kinks, which yeah. Yeah. brings us my, nicely my, back to chapter back five. To of, uh, chapter five, <laughs> in which there is some expressly con- discussed kinks. Uh, yes. J- Jack does so, have a quick fantasy, yes. He does. He, he continues through the base and he has some fantasies about what he would like to do to Kilt while Kilt was resting at night. Um, that is a thing that happens in the book. <laughs> he Jack fantasizes about doing things to Kilt. Um, uh, Jack is using a stun gun on all the guards because, of course... No of heroes in worlds no. of power kill no live anybody. Ammo. Absolutely no. no live ammo. I'm not even sure Solid Snake killed anybody in in nope. the Metal Gear book. Did not. 
I don't think so. No, it was all sleeping darts or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Um, or or kung fu or something like or, that. Or, yeah, or kung fu. Like, there's chop. There's, there's a, a lot of karate the, chops. Yeah. There's a yeah. lot of karate chops in this book. Uh, Jack ends up captured by Kilt in a cage. It's like basically the trash compactor scene from Star Wars. Yeah. Uh, yep. MA1 is presumed dead. Um, and Jack's like, how do I get out? And be like, oh, I have a grappling hook. And he grapple hooks out of the room. <laughs> Man, I would have really taken the tension out of of, of George Lucas's beloved film Star Wars, is it? Yeah. <laughs> Which was hilarious Which is, uh, though, because because in the next scene, uh, Luke uses a grappling hook to get across. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Come on, <that> yep. <laughs> God, the only time was, Luke, God, yeah. that film in general it's just like all tension would be released if just Luke Skywalker had always had a grappling hook <laughs> yeah <laughs> it just has that grappling hook you know mm-hmm. um, so chapter 6 uh, uh, Jack is able to get it out of the room by using his grappling hook he, he does not use his hot finger because he no. realizes it would fry him yeah. uh, the base is on fucking red alert High alert, there's guards running all over the place. Uh, Jack gets shot, but it's only a flesh wound. Yep. Um, he's not He's not in uh, terrible shape. Um, and he signals his helicopter, but oh no, bad soldiers are closing in. And that's yes. pr- that's pretty much chapter six. Uh, Can I, I, I made a note, by the way, because I did my best to read chapter six. My only note says, nothing to say other than the chapter is only three pages long. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you'll, so you'll get this that. only three pages you'll, compared to chapter yeah. one, which is like a nice solid twelve pages to introduce the world of Bionic Commander. Chapter yeah, six there's there's no long. rhyme or reason to how they 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 space these out at all. No, so, oh, right. Yeah. What, 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 where does the chapter start and where does it end? Just like oh, well, whatever's interesting. It, it ends when it ends. Thank you very <laughs> <Yeah>. much. <laughs> We don't question the author's uh, creative method here at Worlds of Power. Absolutely not. We no. we we understand that uh, cre- authors are the ultimate creators. Or do you something. think that was uh, Judith's idea? Or do you think that was what it, Levi Levi something? There was also another writer involved in this who I don't know what. Oh, oh, involved, well, but, but there's three, right? There's obviously. Yeah, so the creator, Judith, Seth Godin. yeah, Seth Godin is the creator. There's somebody that's thanked for the for something. There's so, somebody who wrote in the out. There's like somebody who wrote the outline, and yes. then I think Judith wrote the uh, book. wrote the book. I got story created by Capcom and Eric Linewand. That was Linewand. it. There it is. <laughs> Eric Linewand. <laughs> so I don't do you know think who he was the person is. who said, "Okay, chapter six, three three pages." I, you know, based on the brief conversation we had with, uh, with Seth about these, it is very much, it's, it's impossible to say because it, it, it depended entirely on the author half the time. Sometimes he would like have to squeeze blood out of a stone. And other times he had a great story about a person who he said will remain nameless. We, we still don't know which one it is, uh, who (laughs) got so invested in the book and wouldn't stop tinkering with it and toying with it and Seth Godin actually had to go to his house and like <laughs> physically take Pulled the manuscript money. from him yeah because he was like no I could still do this and I still want to do that and and we're still not sure which one it is but uh, it, it, it turns out George R.R. R. Martin wrote yeah. like uh, yeah. he, he was the one who wrote the Mega Man 2 book and they yeah. just like he, they just wrote somebody else's name on it he's like in, in no between- I got an idea I really want to the robot mass is going to have this really interesting political lineage. It's like, <laughs> right, <laughs> right, right. Okay. like in between, in between writing that weird uh, modern Beauty and the Beast TV show that he oh, did. Yeah, uh, oh, yeah, he, he did. He was, he was writing Worlds of Power. He sure as hell <laughs> yeah, did he that. Was. Um, he was the, working on a really interesting bubble bubble book, but they were just like, no, nah, Scholastic's cut, cut the funding. Find another project. I would, go I would go, write go back to those uh, Ice and Fire books. <laughs> the, um, yeah, not going anywhere. Yeah. And it's you know what's hilarious is like Seth Godin is not a gamer uh, no, at no. all. He is unable to play games. It gives him like a headache or something like that. So yeah. he just like 
he 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 wrote a lot of game guides just by watching his like nephew play i want to say was the yeah. was the story behind that is like he's like yeah just just play i'll watch and we'll write i'll write down notes on what you have to do in the game <laughs> yeah, yeah. Or something like that uh interesting guy though he's a really oh yeah really hey, interesting he's guy. Really neat. yeah that was a, yeah. that was a fun interview <laughs> yeah um so chapter seven he gets out of there by pressing whoosh. the speed lift button. Whoosh. Yeah. Whoosh. 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 Um, there's lo- <laughs> I, I wrote down whoosh as a note. Oh, yeah, I, I, made a screen- <laughs> I made a screenshot of whoosh. <laughs> which, then, which then led to a lot of uh, introspection about um, Jack running his left hand across his bionic arm. If it hadn't been for the arm, he would have been dead about 30 seconds into the mission. He looked at the lifelike plastic, wishing it was his real arm. Too bad he couldn't have both. <laughs> yeah, there's like a lot. There's like a sudden moment of like, you know, he, he's like he, he has emotions uh, yeah. about the arm. He goes back and forth on it a lot. He does. Um, by the way, it will surprise no one that on the list of books after uh, that Robert, another Robert Heinlein book makes. I was. The, go- I, I made. Yeah. I made. I, I made <laughs> notes about. Because I didn't want to hop ahead, but I did make notes about the books that were said, hey, if you like this, and one yeah. of them was about a girl who was in a accident who then had to live with like a prosthetic. And I was like, seems a bit gritty in real it versus, hey, if you like Bionic Commando, you might. And then I guess I this, wonder, this is, is this where that, you'll... that came from? Maybe? I, I, I can't say for sure, but we did. It's like, the first one we read, Mega Man Two. Hold on, it 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 has them in the back. And now now based now bear in mind on top of all of this, uh, listeners. Before we even started recording, uh, I pointed out that Mega Man Two is actually a junior Worlds yes. of Power book. So it's it's like rudimentary uh, uh, Worlds of Power. And in the back here. Uh, For dear readers, I hope you liked reading Mega Man 2. Here's a list of other books I thought you might like. The Forgotten Door by Alexander Key. Have Space Suit Will Travel by Robert Heinlein. (laughs) How to Eat Fried Worms by Thomas Rockwell. I, Robot by Isaac Asimov. (laughs) My Robot Buddy by Alfred Sloat. And The Phantom Tollbooth by Norton Duster. (laughs) It'll be like... Age, it will be like three of them will be age appropriate, and then two of them will be like the Old Testament. Yeah. <laughs> if you if you like, if you like, like this, <laughs> yeah, you're telling kids to read Robert. Hi- you're reading, ki- telling kids to read Robert Hein Robert <laughs> Go Fascism Heinlein. Right. Um, <laughs> if you like this book, you will also like. We'll remember it for you wholesale and super fudge. Just right. like, yeah, sure. <laughs> I put both of those in my Amazon uh, cart. Go ahead. If you like this book about Bionic Commando, you'll love the things they carried. <laughs> if you enjoyed this fascism, you might also enjoy the Turner Diaries. Uh, did you Did you have to read the things they carried, Phil? In high no, school? I. Uh, oh, sorry. Have well, to J- fucking James, got to. You got uh, to. Yeah, James, did you have you ever read it? I don't. I don't even know what it is. Oof. All right, it's it, a it's a God, it's it's, it's a, book. a really it's a really heavy book about the Vietnam War, um, and it's just about like the things soldiers left behind after they oh, died. Jesus, right? The it, the things they carried, like a photo or or like you know whatever, and it's stories about that, and it's like. It is the. It's just the biggest punch in the gut bummer uh, of a book. And it's it's written. <laughs> it's basically the. I mean, it's it's basically the memoirs of the guy who wrote it. Like it's all. It's oh, for the most part very true yeah. stories. I remember in, in the first like five pages or something. One of the the things that they carried. They would talk about the medics carrying M and M's so that they could pretend that they were life saving pills. And, and you're like, like this, this guy's bleeding out and he's dying and you feed him an M&M and say, you're going to be all right, buddy. Just swallow that down. It's like, okay, I'm invested. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Jesus. You, you pulled me in with this. Um, yeah. and, was, and was that book recommended on the back of um, the Ninja Garden <laughs> no, Wars of Power? No, the, uh, no, 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 no. <laughs> but, it, but we're not too far off at this point. Oh, we're not too far off. Alongside Judy Bloom. <laughs> we're a sneeze away from, are you there, God? It's me, Margaret, and the things they carry. <laughs> 
I, I don't I don't want to go too far off the show, but I do just want to quickly mention. So when I was um so our school curriculum was they hadn't updated since the 80s, so all of our reading material was all to do with nuclear holocaust stuff. Sure. And one of the books that we read was called like Children of the Dust, and it was literally like this harrowing story about three generations of children before like right on the cusp of war the first like generation of that and then like the generation afterwards and it's just like these incredibly detailed explanations of just like oh yeah everyone's gone blind because of the brightness and Uh the water's completely irradiated so you can't drink any of it and uh just like reams of diesel about this and it's just like "Mm, hmm Yeah. Uh, can we do Romeo and Juliet <laughs> yeah, <laughs> next yeah. semester? I think that'd be yeah. a bit of more. Please. We would like to, we would like to turn it not down a notch into teen suicide. Oh. Yeah, <laughs> please. <laughs> I need a little break. I, it's be, it's been a thing with my wife basically since we met. Uh, that that like I have I get night terrors and I I I. Uh, I talk in my sleep and all kinds of unnerving shit and, uh, and I'll wake up and I'll, and I'll look at Emily and I'll go, yeah, I just had a just crazy bad dreams last night. And she'll go, Oh, is that so? Could it be that you, uh, you were reading a fucking horrifying horror novel before you went to bed? Do you, I, I'm not, I know you're into that sweetie, but maybe just something light, something friendly it to the point that, uh, the week of our wedding, uh, she, she put a moratorium. She's like, she's like, cause I was like, I gotta bring a book. I gotta bring a book to the hotel, you know? Yeah. And, and she said, you're not bringing horror. You're not, it's our, it is our, it is our <laughs> wedding. You're not bringing. So I brought, I brought a star Wars novel to read. <laughs> <laughs> and she's like, that's great. That's fine. Go, good. Good. Hi, hi, sci-fi adventure. Go for yeah. it, honey. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. May the force be with you because if you read a horror novel during our wedding weekend, I won't be. Uh, so <laughs> so um, we get to chapter seven. Uh, yes. We're in chapter seven. Speed lift whoosh. Um, he has the dilemma <laughs> about his biological arm and he gets to uh, San Gennaro, Gennaro, which is, mm. which is, uh, it's a place in, I guess, Fake Argentina. I don't even know where, know where it has this orange is supposed trees. to be. That's the only thing that's important. It's orange trees and made in. Yeah. It's orange trees. trees, so it's in tropical, you know, yeah. tropical area. Um, so he he sees a woman who he thinks I wrote I highlighted this. Jack thought he she looked like uh, she might be Kilt's sister, and he didn't trust her for one second. Welcome <laughs> to San Gennaro, the woman said smoothly, giving him the once over with her eyes. We are a peaceful village and we stay that way because we have rules. If you use weapons here, use weapons here, you will be killed. Love it. Um okay. <laughs> completely natural naturalistic yeah. racing. That's what you Totally want. totally the first thing you would say to somebody. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Death penalty mm-hmm. if you shoot a gun. Um, he, uh, he runs into town. I was about to say, is that followed by a cafe advertising in plot capitals? The best pizza in the the best pizza in the world. (laughs) He runs to a cafe that has the best pizza 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 in the world. Pizza comes back, folks. Um, pizza comes back and he gets there. Uh, Jack made a beeline for it. He hadn't eaten pizza since that night in Buenos Aires with Joe. Oh, Mm. Joe, how he loved his tender touch. The Federation cafeteria was <laughs> mean, mean potatoes potato place. place. Um, and he meets uh, Heather Willis, who is another mm. spy for the Federation. And she leaves him a note about the flare bombs that he'll need in stage four. And he wolfs down this pizza. Um, then he meets a really co- annoying kid called Tiger. His uh, short he, rounds. Yeah. I was just going to. I have a short yeah. round. Yep. <laughs> He meets Short Round and Short Round like guides him around town and he gets to an arcade where the flare bombs are supposed to be hidden in a room behind the arcade, except the room is like blue lights and spikes on the floor and the, yeah. the flare bombs <laughs> are on a shelf on the other side of the spikes. We're like, guys, you don't have to actually adapt the trap it's, rooms. It, it is <laughs> funny though, because that is in, not only is it in the next one, it is also in rearmed and it looks exactly <laughs> like that. But in high definition, <laughs> just like you might as well have said he walked into a room. It looked like a video game level. Anyway, there were yeah. spikes. Yeah. <laughs> what? There were spikes. It, it was three meters by nine meters. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so um, 
he he uh this is like part of the pit portion from earlier that that started the book um yeah yeah, the pit peril um so yeah he he gets across and he melts a spike with his hot finger and he gets the bombs (laughs) he gets the bombs and he gets it back and he tells tiger to basically fuck off now like he doesn't he's like get out of here kid You're, you're you're no good to me um kid (laughs) I, I only have get out of here, for, kid. You bother me. You bother me. Um, yeah. And so then he talks to the captain who's more concerned about the arm than him. Um, and he sees Heather walking away. She's going towards the boats. Um, there's a lot of like weird details in here that don't matter at all. Um, mm. And he gets to stage four on his ha- helicopter and he outmaneuvers the bad jets in his helicopter, which I would I would like to say is probably impossible. Like, yeah. Yeah. like a helicopter versus a jet. There should really be no... Composition. N- no. no. Yeah. <laughs> but we are also talking about helicopters that have autopilot settings. So That's true. We, we do just have, have yeah. autopilot and autopilot, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he is able yeah. to... Um, and he jumps down and he ends up in the water and he's fighting a giant octopus. It's like, what is this? The the what? deleted scene from the Goonies? Right. It became <laughs> it became <laughs> Cobra Triangle out of fucking nowhere. Like, <laughs> Our- Judith was watching footage of the game that they sent over, but it was accidentally like like a level from DuckTales is spliced in right. there. She didn't notice the graphics had changed and she went, Oh yeah, this just must be what happens in uh, this is fine. Yeah, that's fine. I- yeah. I, th- I think she just was familiar enough with video games that she was like, these are just soldiers that he's fighting, the occasional robot. Video games have giant octopuses. I'll put that in there. That'll yeah. that'll spice things up. Like, no, <laughs> what are you doing? And, like, and then she goes like, you know, this 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 music from this moon level really slaps. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> and no one would disagree. <laughs> Have you ever did you ever hear the the version that they did in the DuckTales animated series, the recent animated oh, series? Oh yeah, where I had no. Lawrence um sung by they, the, the, so, the cousin's uh, mother, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So oh, there's a moment, uh uh what's uh what's her name? The 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 mother of the ducks. Um who was lost on uh it basically she's lost on the moon and there's like a scene where it cuts to her and she is singing a song to like a, a, a this spider monster or whatever to to get it to go to sleep and it's that song it was the moon oh it that's was, cool. they used the the music the music bed for the moon theme and she added lyrics to it and it was Aww. like it was such a neat little moment. That's that, re- really that recent cool. cartoons, like it, it's decent. I it, mean, it's, it's one of those really things good. where it's like they cancelled it after like four seasons. People were like, no, it should have went on forever. But it's like, no, they did like quite a lot of good stuff with it. It was it was really good. It had David Tennant <laughs> as uh, Uncle Scrooge. Scrooge. Yeah, nice. Um, a couple of the, like um, SNL guys as the nephews. Danny like, Putty, one of them was Bob, uh, Bobby Monaghan, yeah. and stuff like that. Bobby but the Moynihan, weirdest choice Dan- was. What's whatever the scientist is called fixes Donald Duck's voice, and for a single episode, he speaks like Don. It's Don he, he's Don Cheadle. <laughs> he's Don Cheadle. It's, it's like, yeah. they, it's like oh, he puts something in his, on his throat to fix the the problem he has with his vocal cords, and he's like, "I can speak clearly now," and it's just Don Cheadle. <laughs> <laughs> Don Cheadle's voice. Oh, that's fun. Okay, that's great. Because when you think of Donald Duke, you do think, oh, yeah, the guy who does the bad Cockney accent in Ocean's <laughs> Eleven, that's my guy. Yeah. We're in that's Barney. The- <laughs> so oh, bad. leave it out. <laughs> oh, leave it out. <laughs> leave it out. <laughs> so bad. Oh, oh God. But, um, so. <laughs> Chapter eight. <laughs> Chapter eight. Uh, chapter eight. This is where I actually mislabeled um, uh, the 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 my notes. But he fights the giant octopus and he wins um, sure. because he remembers he has a second grappling hook on his hands. No, it surprises him. He didn't even know about the second or he one. realizes yeah. he has a second one. And like, oh, the captain must have forgotten. Instead of and instead of it ripping his arm out of the socket. Uh, it actually provides more force to to get him away, uh, get so, him away from the op- from the from him, the octopus yeah, from the octopus. Cool, cool. This is yeah, you uh, are bionic. So he he 
he gets through the octopus and he he gets in the base and it's a bunch of obstacle courses. He's just like, and that's actually like later levels of Bionic Commando are very obstacle course heavy, where yeah. it's just like swinging. A, there's like there is no platforms. It's just like swinging across a bunch of over spikes areas, and stuff, yeah. yeah, um, over spikes and stuff. And uh, he uh, he 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 uh, gets his way past the out, and he gets into the communications room and he intercepts a message between Kilt and the Hand. Not the daredevil one. No. <laughs> not the cool one. <laughs> not, not the ninjas from Daredevil, but a guy Different called the Hand. Ninjas. Yeah. Different, Different ninjas. ninjas. Different ninjas, yeah. All right. Uh, chapter 11. Actually, the last chapter I have notes on. Um, <laughs> we're, we're well, I was doing there, my notes. We're getting there. We're getting there. I, I was yeah. doing my notes, and then I... I, I, I didn't finish. Um, so <laughs> Jack is Jack is crawling through a, a sewer and he gets caught by a Venus flytrap. Um, fine, course, fuck it, yeah, fine, yeah. Why not? fuck it. I don't whatever. care. It's fine. You know what? It, I just started thinking of that that um, that level in that game that uh, the Game Grumps were playing. It was like the really hard one where he's fighting oh, the plants. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The the oh fuck. The, the, it was a it was a fan made game. It was a fan yeah. rom game. Yeah. It was like Action Boy or something, yeah, something like that. Like that. Yeah. Okay. And and Aaron is just lo- absolutely losing his shit fighting this plant. Right. Green plant, blue plant, purple <laughs> plant. <laughs> That's oh, what I thought yeah. of with the Venus flytrap. Um, yeah, you know what's you know what is funny though, and I made a note of this is that apparently, like even though he's fighting a like an sentient Venus flytrap, Jack thought over what he learns about plant warfare in spy school. So apparently, this is an ongoing problem. Like plant warfare seems to be a thing that he's the U.S. He's never is surprised. aware of. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, he's never surprised by this. No, I've heard octopus of this before. Or, yeah, yeah, he knows about this shit. And okay, fine, fuck it. <laughs> so I'm not going to be surprised either. Yeah, yeah. no, a lot of um, spec ops work in um, Argentina and Buenos Aires. They just use giants. So they, they use Audrey twos as part of pretty much. It's, <laughs> a, it's just a, a whole bunch of Audrey twos. And, yeah, less and musical, yeah. but the idea is the same. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um. So we get to uh, he makes his he continues his way through and he's uh, he's he's able to uh, get to the safe where the wide gun is and he gets the wide gun. Well, I was going to say that's enough. Of, um, what did you call him? Like a stupid cliff, like a dummy's cliff. Yeah, or whatever schmuck bait. It was. Schmuck bait. Schmuck bait. Because yeah. it was yeah. like, <laughs> what if Kilt had rigged the combination to fool him with gritted he teeth? Didn't. Jack Bold opened the door. <laughs> Begin at chapter he, 12. I pulled the glide gun out of the safe. Glad to still be one piece. Yeah, everything was fine. <laughs> and everything fine. was fine. <laughs> nothing <right>. bad <laughs> happened. That's over. And nothing, nothing bad happens. So uh, <laughs> chapter 12, he, ha- he has the wide gun now and he's uh, going on a rendezvous um, with, uh, with Heather Willis in stage yep. 15. And we get some more backstory about Heather Willis and how, uh, she's the harlot that Super Joe was actually dating and breaking up his 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 loving relationship with Super Joe. Uh, her mm. and Super Joe were supposed to get married in New York mm. City after the the Buenos Aires mission, but then he got captured by Kilt because we don't know why. There's been no motivation for that scene yet, but who cares? Uh, it doesn't matter. <laughs> it doesn't matter. <laughs> doesn't matter. Doesn't that's matter. A, uh, let's let's be a quick real. No, and I guess maybe now reading through this properly again, because they kept switching between whether they were the bads or whether they were the Naz. But from what I understand now, the bads are working for the Naz. Like the, the bads still two came after the Naz. Uh, yeah, right. yeah, yeah. There was the Naz, and then the Naz were defeated, and now there's the bads. The, 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 okay, Naz, so the Naz, the Naz, Naz came the first, right. and then yes. after the Naz were defeated, uh, they became the Neo Naz. Uh, sorry, the bads. The bads. Um, <laughs> and Master D was a Naz scientist, yes. and then and then NASA hired him. So oh, that, I see. Yeah. As, part of, as part of Operation <laughs> Paperclip. As part of yeah. Operation, Operation Paperclip. Uh, Operation Paper Put Togetherer thingy. And <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Operation Clippy. He is. Yeah, uh, yeah. Operation <laughs> Clippy. 
<laughs> he was it looks like you're his... trying to repurpose Nazi scientists. Here's how I can help. <laughs> hey, Verna, do you need help today? <laughs> This looks very similar to the V2. Do you want me to... Uh... V Gates! Um... <laughs> oh. V Gates hair... Uh, <laughs> 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 oh, this Clara hair commissar. Uh... <laughs> oh, boy. Um, so, uh, he meets up with Heather, and he is... He's back to wolfing down food, man. He yeah. there's no he only wolfs food. There is no other way that he eats food other he than eats, wolfing he it down. He eats like a boy in an Archie comic. Like he's like, I'm gonna have <laughs> yeah. three of all the menu and like he, is, he, he eats like jug heads. Yeah, <laughs> yeah he's yeah. shoving his head full of food. <laughs> and just hand for just burgers one by yeah, one. Like, just he's uh, like, yeah. Jughead or the who's the dude who's like uh, I'll pay you uh, oh, Wimpy tomorrow. from, from wimpy. Uh, the he's, Popeye he's Wimpy yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I will gladly Just... pay you tomorrow for a hamburger today yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or like those like those Silver Age um, Superman comics where it's like I need to eat all these hamburgers and they'll kill Jimmy Olsen like <laughs> 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 oh yeah, those 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 Silver Age Superman comics were like peak schmuck bait comics. Oh, oh like yeah. the covers. Oh yeah, like the, the, it's like oh no, Superman is evil and he's the Pope now. <laughs> 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 oh, I gotta buy this comic. I gotta know more. It's like it's like Jim. It's Superman is it what is gonna throw Jimmy Olsen off of a cliff? Or something. Sorry, Jimmy. Yeah. You know my secrets. You're not allowed to live anymore. <laughs> God, I love those covers. And then oh, the story man, would not man. have really anything to do with that. But you know, it's 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 it got people in the door. You know, yeah. that's what those yeah, new God, DC God, movies are missing out on. Like they should have trailers yeah. which are edited like that, where it's. <laughs> Yeah, I am kind of generally uh, amazed that there isn't more trolling in trailers. Like there yeah. isn't like it just feels like we're we're it's going to happen and it's going to take all of us so off guard uh, one day where it's just going to be, you know, touted as some sort of romantic yeah. comedy or something. And people it's going to be torture porn and it's going to piss <laughs> everyone off. What was that movie that said that was like Steven Seagal is going to star in it and then Steven Seagal dies in the first five minutes? Oh, oh, oh yeah, yeah, I know. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a more you know recent I want film. To... And I know I know the one you mean, but I can't remember. Yeah, he's, he, he's like, he's like, he's like, oh, he's going to save everybody. And then he's he like, gets thrown out of plane. He gets thrown out of like a jet or something yeah. like that. It's like, yeah. oh, OK. Well, it's sort of like Sam Jackson and Deep Blue Sea. Um, right, yeah. <laughs> oh, but said, that's towards the end, though, I suppose. That's, that's like at the midway point. Yeah, that's and a little bit further in. The, and then you discover that LL Cool J is the final girl of Deep Blue Sea. So. <laughs> LL Cool J is the final girl. LL well, Cool J and Saffron Burroughs. Are the oh, yes. are the final girls of Deep Blue Sea? Look, LL Cool J is the final girl in all of our hearts, so I don't see why he shouldn't be such in a Ladies sharp. Love movie. Cool James. I'm just saying. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, uh, t- so Tiger interrupts <laughs> that is what them. His name stands for God. LL it Cool is. James. LL Cool James. Uh, Ladies yeah. love Cool James. Ladies love Cool James. Um, Ladies love Cool James. That um, sounds yeah, like a nickname you come up with in third grade. Like, yeah. <laughs> he probably did. Probably. And the thing yeah, is, is that when you show there's an LL Cool J, you go, oh, that might be a really, like, that, that's got to be something that interesting. That works. Yeah. 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 That might be a thing. And it yeah. never is. <laughs>